In this lesson, we're going to look at how to disable a button with JavaScript. So you may know already that there's a HTML attribute that you can add to buttons to actually make them disabled. That is, it makes them inactive and unclickable. And if we edit the button that we've got on page at the moment, you can see by setting the disabled attribute to disabled, the button is no longer clickable and it's also greyed out to indicate to the user that it's disabled. So all we need to do with our JavaScript code is to set the disabled attribute to disabled. So in our console, if we target the login button, which just has an ID of login btn, we can set an attribute by using the set attribute function. And as you can see, it takes two arguments, the name of the attribute that you want to set and the value that you want to give it. So we simply fill in disabled for both of those. And you can see as soon as we run that line of code, the button becomes disabled. And if we go back to our document object, you can see the disabled attribute has been set accordingly. So if that's all you need, you can take that bit of code with you and put that into your project to disable any buttons that you like. But I thought it'd be good to have an example of when you might use this, which is why I created this small login form. And what we'll actually do now is create a bit of code that listens for changes to the form and only enables the login button when a username and password of a certain length has been entered. So over in the code, just to inspect the markup, you can see I've got a form with an ID of login form and two input boxes each with their own IDs and also that login button, which I'm going to set as disabled by default, just so that when the page loads, it's already unclickable. And in our console, we'll write some JavaScript that listens for changes to either of those input boxes. And when the user input reaches a certain length, we'll enable the login button. So the first thing we'll do is we'll set up an event listener on the login form. And we'll listen for input on the login form. So that will set up an event listener for either of the input boxes that we've got contained within our form. So now it's just simply a matter of checking the length of those two fields. And if the length of the username and the password field is greater than zero, in other words, if the user has actually typed something into each of those boxes, we'll actually enable the login button. And to do that, we need to actually remove the disabled attribute, which we do with a function unsurprisingly called remove attribute. And of course, if one of those input boxes is still empty, we want to actually make sure that the login button is still disabled, which we'll do by setting the disabled attribute again. So let's test that out by typing in some characters. So you can see by simply typing into the username button, we've only met the first part of our if statement criteria. And as soon as we type something into the password box, the login button becomes enabled. If we actually remove one of the values from one of the input boxes, you can see the button becomes disabled again. Of course, we can set any length that we like for the minimum amount of characters to be entered. We could set it so that a username and a password of at least length 4 needs to be entered. So hopefully that just illustrates how you could actually use this in a real world situation by setting up an event listener to conditionally change the disable state of a button, possibly from some input provided by the user.